this step in writing the equilibrium equations for frames, it looks much the same as it would for uh, beams in that we go to the joint, we look at the member end moments in their positive direction. Now, of course, on the end of the member is clockwise, but on the joint it's counterclockwise. We sum all the moments up that are either applied to the joint or are from the internal effects, and that would be equal to zero. Right, well, we do the same thing for both joints. We get the same thing. The only thing that's kind of new in this case is because we do have a lateral load applied at that joint, I've gone ahead and shown it just to remind myself that it actually exists. I haven't, though, shown any of the axial forces or the shear forces. I've kind of dashed them in here. But that's just, uh, again, sort of remind me that the key thing out of these joints are that we're writing equations evolving in the moments. We do that because we have slope deflection equations that give the moments in terms of the member end rotations and so on and so forth. Well, we come down, though, now we've got it. We only have two equations. We've got three unknowns theta a, or sorry, theta b, theta c, and then a chord rotation term. We need another equation of equilibrium, and it's going to be one that involves that that chord rotation. Right, so we've got this lateral load of 10 kips that's being applied to the beam. And we're not going to make any assumptions like we might in the portal method about what happens. This is the uh, linear elastic exact approach. So let's come down here and label these end moments. That's the, the ones that we really want to deal with here, MAB and MDC. We want to deal with these because they're the ones that um, are associated with those, just like these up here, with the slope deflection equation. And that's what we want to get there. Now, the way we're going to do it is by looking first at the global situation. We've got VAB. Um, I've chosen a particular direction for the unknown shear um, that is somewhat arbitrary, but it turns out to be fortuitous the way I ended up doing that. And Let's also go ahead, well, no, let's go ahead and just do the, the global equation and what we can get out of it. All right, so for the global, then, just directly writing this, it's, it's easy to see that sum of forces in the y, or sorry, in the x, that we've got VAB plus VDC is equal to 10 kips. Doesn't seem like that's going to help us very much. So what we'll do is we'll go to the local system, represented by these free body diagrams over here. We have two columns. We're just going to focus on the left column first. That would have a moment at the end of MAB and at the other end MBA. We've got the shear that we just drew over here at the left is VAB. It needs to be in the same direction as what we had there. And then the one at the top would be VBA. And notice that if we were to sum moments about the top, then, and let's take clockwise as positive, then we would get, I'm going to just go ahead and write this one out, we get MAB plus MBA, right, the two end moments then have to be uh, equilibrated by VAB times that column length, right, and that has to be equal to zero. Well, that column length in this case is 10 foot. Huh. Interesting. And then we do the same thing for the other column. MDC there, MCD at the top. We have VDC at the bottom, VCD at the top. Again, let's sum now moments up at the top, and we get then that MDC plus MCD minus VDC times 10 feet is, again, equal to zero. How does that help us? Well, it gives us equations that we can now substitute in up here, and it's actually kind of more convenient when you realize that we have VAB times 10 and VDC but times 10, the same thing to multiply the whole thing by 10 foot. We do that, substitute it in, we're going to get now our final equation that we're going to need that's going to ultimately be MAB plus MBA plus M, I'm going to rewrite this here, take the MCD first, 
sort of alphanumeric kind of approach, or well, alphabetical approach, plus the MDC. And that's not going to equal 0. That's going to equal then 10 foot times uh, 10 kip, or 100 kip feet. And that will be then our series of equations. We had 1 and 2 up at the top, and then by combining cleverly the global and the local equations, we get our third equation that involves only the membrane moments from which we can now substitute in our slope deflection equations that will have our unknown displacements, theta b, theta c, and the chord rotation term. And that's, of course, our next couple of steps to go solve for those and back substitute.